major cash crops that boosted Nigeria's economy before and even after the oil boom was cotton. In fact, Nigeria in 2010 was Africa's leading cotton producer and number 12 in the world, producing over 602,000 metric tons. Production has slumped since then, but government in its determination to return to the glorious days of agriculture has decided to commit to reviving production of this essential cash crop, and research is one way to ensure that this is done and sustained. The Institute for Agricultural Research, Zaria, is working on cotton as one of its mandate crops in order to increase its productivity and improve its varieties. In this episode of the program, we are focusing on research findings of the IAR in cotton, Artemisia and Jatropha. But before then, we will take news from the Ministry of Agriculture and Rural Development. Keep watching. In our diary, new Agric Minister sets priority. Also in the news, farmers get training in Kaduna on new potato variety. The new Minister of Agriculture and Rural Development, Muhammad Mahmoud Abubakar, has assumed office. In a handover ceremony witnessed by the top management team of the ministry, the minister said his leadership would give priority to livestock transformation plan, research and extension services, amongst others, to ensure peace and food security in the country. The priority of this ministry under my leadership will be to ensure that we provide the necessary policy direction and drive that will truly position agriculture as the mainstay of our economy as captured in the medium-term national development plan and Mr. President's vision of uplifting 100 million Nigerians out of poverty in 10 years. In this regard, the livestock transformation plan will be a priority due to its implication, not just on food security and nutrition, but its overall impact in carbon insecurity in the country. Mahmoud Abubakar appealed to the agencies under the ministry to work in harmony with him to achieve the set objectives. The outgoing minister, Mohammed Sabo Nanono, while delivering the handover speech, appreciated the directors and other members of staff of the ministry for working with him while he was in the office. Nanono highlighted his achievements and appealed to the new minister to sustain the policies of the ministry towards food security in the country. We have enormous challenges. We have to change the farming part. That's why we on back on mechanization. We have to solve this problem of pulling the hardest. And that's why we launched National uh, Livestock Transformation uh, Flag. We have to work for small scale farmers. That's why the president gave approval of 600 billion naira for supporting small scale farmers. Even though still we are battling with the institutions to get that fund released to small scale farmers. Federal Ministry of Agriculture and Rural Development, Northwest Zonal Office, recently trained about 40 farmers drawn from different parts of Kaduna State on good agronomic practices of the new variety of the sweet potato. The new variety was developed by the National Root Crops Research Institute, UMUDIKE, in collaboration with International Potato Center in 2018. Speaking in an interview with our correspondents at the Ministry's Zonal Office in Kaduna shortly after the workshop and presentation of the crop, the Acting Zonal Director, Northwest Zone of the Ministry, Abdul Karim Durosil Loru, said that the orange fleshed sweet potato is drought tolerant, resistant to sweet potato viral diseases, and has early maturity. Well, the take home for the farmers is number one, some of them have been introduced to this particular species of potato for the first time. Those who are used to planting potato, they are also learning new techniques you know, that they can use to improve their yield. They've also learned you know, a number of things that we probably do, did not know before, especially the, uh, we decided to discourage them from using, you know, um, chemical fertilizer. I'm very interested in farming. I have, uh, I'm doing a little bit of it now, and I have received an impetus to do much more on a bigger scale. A representative of the women in agriculture, Saada Tukanin, advised farmers to not only produce potato, but to also go into processing to enjoy the value chain benefits inherent in potato production. 
When you farm it and you process it, as a woman, I am um, into farming for more than 10 years. So I learned whatever I farm to know how to process a bit of it. Other farmers who participated in the workshop applauded the efforts of the government and promised to utilize the knowledge gained for the production of the potato. Research has a lot to offer in cotton production for any nation, be it genetic improvement, pest management, or its utilization in textile or pharmaceutical industries, amongst others. In Burkina Faso, where cotton output increased over 120% in 10 years, the success was attributed to the adoption of genetically modified cotton. In our next segment, Records of the FDA, we'll take a look at the research that has been carried out by the Institute for Agricultural Research to make cotton, Artemisia and Jatropha more productive, pest-resistant, among other issues in the country. Sit back and watch. Cotton is one of the major cash crops of social and economic importance in the agricultural and industrial sectors in Nigeria. Production and marketing of cotton in the country dates back to 1903 with the British Cotton Growers Association, which was later replaced by the Cotton Marketing Board of Nigeria. Cotton is very useful for a variety of products. The textile mills will require those spawn lint to manufacture their fabrics. Following that, the seed, when I've been gined, there is an attachment to the seed that is referred to as the force, F-U-Z-Z, -Z, force. Now, the force is used for the manufacture of blankets Cotton lint is also used in the manufacture of surgical cotton that are used in hospitals. Cotton lint is used for the manufacture of banknotes. Aside the uses of cotton in textiles and pharmaceutical industries, edible oil can also be extracted from cotton seed, while its cake can be used for livestock feed. No part of cotton is useless as its trash is also used for production of particle boards. Considering the economic importance of this crop, the Institute for Agricultural Research has made intensive research in genetic improvement of this crop resulting in two different varieties in Nigeria. The Institute has been able to develop 13 varieties like I've earlier said, and these varieties are categorized into two main types. Out of the 13, before I give the categorization, out of, two, out of the 13, six are already in production. And the varieties are coded as Samcot 1 to Samcot 13. So Samcot 8 to Samcot 13 are in production. Samcot 8 to Samcot 10 are short to medium staple varieties, while some cut 11 to some cut 13 are long staple varieties. As a result of research, Nigerian cotton stands out in the Committee of Nations of the World. Nigeria has a textile industry, so we breed in a manner and in a way to ensure that the quality of the lint that we come out with is suitable for the requirements of our various textile industries in this nation. Now, having said that, I will also want to emphasize the fact that because we, are, we, are, we have bred them, our cotton genetics uh, uh, types have been bred for use in Nigeria, they are adaptable to the situation that prevails in Nigeria. So they can withstand the stresses that are available in Nigeria, the bio, bio stresses that are available in the nation, such that it will compete better.
According to the researchers, good agronomical practices are required in cotton farming, which include a good choice of land, land preparation, 90 cm apart ridges, two seeds must be planted on a hill. Planting on ridges must be 4 to 5 cm spacing, avoiding waterlogging, good weed management, pest management, among others, for good yield. Then, there must be, you must apply herbicide. The appropriate herbicides that we have investigated and recommended in terms of its rate of application and period of application, the farmer must do that. Then, he must apply the appropriate recommended pesticide prior to planting. Prior to planting is very vital. Then at a particular stage of the growth of the crop, that is the plant cutting, called cutting now, the farmer must apply the necessary pesticide to ensure that the plants are protected against insects. Bad insect is the number one enemy of cotton. Taking these into cognizance, the Institute for Agricultural Research has the biggest insect museum and collection in sub-Saharan Africa to ensure that danger of insect to its mandate crops is addressed. A tour of the J.C. Dimin Insect Museum of IAR reveals a collection of the insect and its importance to crop protection and production in Nigeria. Here in this insect museum and collection, IAR has 650 different families of insects and 70,000 insect specimens, both good and bad. The aim of it is that when wherever there is any outbreak of insect anywhere, the people send it, us, send it down to us. We classify it and pass it to the scientists who make recommendations on how to manage those insects. When it comes to outbreak, when it has to do with agriculture, when it has to do with animals, when it has to do with human beings. The research findings of the Institute has discovered two ways of controlling harmful insects. These include the appropriate use of insecticide and the use of a natural enemy. Research has shown that the natural enemy is a type of insect that feeds on other insects, thereby reducing the population of harmful insects. For the researchers, the Institute's effort is to depopulate harmful insects and increase the natural enemy as a way of achieving this. There are many strategies that are valuable, whether you use pesticide to control them or we use natural enemy or biological control, where we use the natural enemy of the insect to control them for us. We have an example of that that we have placed for you. A sample of a natural enemy of this particular insect. We have placed a sample here. If you look at the sample very carefully, you will discover that the natural enemy look exactly like the insect, the pest. This is the natural enemy. It looks exactly like the pest in terms of the color, in terms of the shape of the wings, the appendages, and even the 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 elongation of the mouth part. But the major difference that is there, which is not known to the pest, is the size of the natural enemy. That is the predator now. The predator is larger than the pest. So what the predator does, the predator feeds on the insect pest. And when the, the predator is amongst them, they will not even detect that they have an enemy in their midst because of the coloration, the similarity in the, in the coloration, and then the appearance. So it will be there, blend with the population, feeding on them unknowingly, the, 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 reducing the population. And of course, the farmer is happy and the pest is killed. So this is a natural way of control, or we can refer to them as a, a biological means of control, using one life form to control the population of another life form. That's what we refer to as biological control. Growth is very slow, you can see that. Another crop the Institute researches into because of its importance in the industrial sector and the nation as a whole is Artemisia. <coughs> Artemisia, uh, its uh, common name is warm wood. 
uh, and it is a member of the uh, genus Artemisia. And there are about 180 species that belong to this, but two are of prominence. One is uh, Artemisia massevere, this otherwise known as Tazargadi. The second one, which become more prominent now, is Artemisia anua. Research has shown that Artemisia has a lot of health benefits as it is used for the production of malaria drugs, among others. Is that it has been shown to hold some promise in combating even COVID-19, which is now a global concern. And also, uh, it has been used in traditional medicine to combat diabetics issues related to, to indigestion. The economic and health benefit of this plant are seen in other countries of the world and its potential uses are the motivation for the research by IAR into Artemisia. Have there been any major breakthroughs by the Institute in its research into Artemisia? Yes, so presently, uh, like I said, the thematic areas uh, crop variety improvement, then research into the farming systems with regards to crop production practices, then the coordination of its value chain development. Uh, we now are conducting research uh, on, on, on biomass production of Artemisia and also on the, the variety development. Uh, we are conducting, we are characterizing the, the materials because the nature of the crop is that it is highly segregated. So we have so far identified about 500 lines. Another important plant that has industrial uses that the Institute has been working on is Jatropha. Lots of varieties have been developed but are yet to be released. The plant, however, holds a lot of promise as an alternative to petrol. So this is uh, a Jatropha plantation. Uh, we have about uh, 57 uh, provenances. Uh, that each, each row like this is a Jatropha provenance collected from one location, one source. So the crop is a biofoil crop. Basically, we are growing it as an oil crop. Uh, biofuel, we know are alternative sources of energy for the fossil uh, base fuel. Like the saying, no man is an island. The Institute for Agricultural Research is on the lead of researchers into those plants we have earlier seen, but it also collaborates with other stakeholders for optimal performance. In our next segment, Partnership for Development, let's have more of IAR achievements as a result of partnership and the need for more partnership on cotton and Artemisia. Keep watching. The Institute for Agricultural Research is working in partnership with international bodies to achieve more in cotton production. Recently, in collaboration with um, some partners, of, I mean international partners, we have also released genetically uh, modified cotton varieties that you will find to be resistant to some of these uh, notorious insect pests. Research has shown that cotton can grow anywhere in Nigeria. There is need for farmers from different geographical zones of the country to take advantage of IAR findings as it has developed different varieties of cotton for different geographic zones of the country. The Institute has more also has been able to go into with a joint effort, collaboration with other foreign scientists and collaborators outside of this nation to develop two um, uh, BT cotton hybrids that are currently produced by farmers in this nation. So that in effect uh, what we've done. And the six varieties that are in production are designated in accordance with the production zones. 
IAR has an array of equipment that is used for testing of cotton to ensure quality cotton that will meet global standards and local industries. Marketing of cotton is one of the challenges of cotton farmers. The Institute is also working closely in partnership with farmers to address the challenge. We have identified some of the challenges they are having and advise them on how they are going to improve and use them. But uh, the challenges are for marketing, ginning, and then this, uh, this, the sale of these products, so which is declining, which has declined over the years. But the Institute is going now around to, imp uh, to encourage the farmers through the Angkor Bara program introduced by the federal government. The Institute for Agricultural Research is also collaborating with other programs in the Ahmadubelle University to develop technologies for the extraction of essential ingredients in the Atamisia plant. Uh, for now, the collaboration is within Nigeria, developing methods for the isolation and the purification of the artisanate or artisanin, artisanin and the other uh, non-active compounds which are also used because the crop now is not only for malaria it has also been indicated to hold pro promise in combating this COVID-19 and also in traditional medicine is being used to cure diabetes and then it is known to have antibacterial properties. For the Institute for Agricultural Research more financing from the federal government to make further research on this crop will make Nigeria tap into the full potential of this crop. Soybean is a leguminous vegetable of the pea family that grows in tropical, subtropical and temperate climates. Soybean was domesticated in the 11th century BC around northeast of China. It is believed that it might have been introduced to Africa in the 19th century by Chinese traders along the east coast of Africa. Soybean consists of more than 36% protein, 30% carbohydrates, and excellent amounts of dietary fiber, vitamins, and minerals. It also consists of 20% oil, which makes it a very important crop or producing edible oil. Its byproducts from the oil production is used as a high protein animal feed in many countries. Soybean also improves soil fertility by adding nitrogen from the atmosphere. In Africa, dry soybean is used to produce milk substitutes and flour. The bean curd is fried and eaten as a snack or breakfast food. Mature beans are not easily digested and contain toxic compounds, which require soaking and prolonged cooking. More than 216 million tons of soybeans were produced worldwide in 2007, of which 1.5 million were in Africa. Africa exports about 20,000 tons annually. Nigeria is the largest producer of soybean in Sub-Saharan Africa, followed by South Africa. Commercial soybean production on large farms also takes place in Zambia and Zimbabwe. However, it is mostly cultivated by small-scale farmers in other parts of Africa where it is planted as a minor food crop among maize, cassava, groundnut, among others. Depending on the variety, soybeans can be harvested between 100 and 150 days after planting. Nearly 95 million hectares of soybeans were harvested worldwide in 2007 with 19 million in Asia 3.5 million in the USA and 1.2 million in Africa. Worldwide consumption of soybean is nearly 11 million tons. Africa consumes about 618,000 tons annually and uses another 4,800 tons for animal feed. Nigeria is the largest consumer of soybeans in Sub-Saharan Africa, followed by Uganda. Nigeria's days of glory in cotton cultivation and production are not lost forever. Indeed, they can be recaptured, nurtured and developed to even surpass the former glory. Partnership and investment plus the gains of research can take us there.
in cotton and other crops for which we have a geographic advantage. Until I come your way again next week, think Nigeria, think development and think agriculture as the sure way to get there. You can follow us on our social media handles showing on your screen. Do stay safe.